The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered a house and wanted to, to, he wanted no one to know about it, but he could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. Then he said to her, for saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When the woman went home, she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, at first glance, um, it's, a, uh, it's a confusing little story. Uh, it's, uh, you know, like, what is it? What's the point? Do you know? It's like, uh, okay, Jesus and, and this Greek woman, the banter, the exchange, he does what she wants anyway, right? Like, what's the, do we need to have, do we need to have him refer to, not really her, but to the Gentile world as dogs? Do we need, you know, do we need that, that particular uh, view of Jesus? And um, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, that's, sorry, it was, you know, it was a rhetorical question, but I got the idea that no one was really tracking with me. So, um, you know, yeah, look, uh, I think that our challenge is uh, in the gospel, and, and uh, Mark is particularly pressed uh, to, to bring us into it, or to lead us out of it, is that, um, you know, so far we've seen so much action with Jesus uh, preaching, teaching, um, you know, it, this, this great authority and power that is at work in him, um, power to heal, power to cast out demons. I mean, he's just, he's on the move, and it's like, wow, this is, this is amazing. And uh, we're likely to just see the, uh, the phenomena in front of us and say, and, and start to think of Jesus on our own terms. Again, whether it's like this kind of medical missionary or this uh, the, the itinerant uh, preacher or so, I don't know, so, something of the sort. And, and here uh, in, this, in this chapter so far, uh, and we're already at, I think, the third pericope at least, we're, we're, st we're seeing what uh, Mark intends us to see about Jesus' mission and what, and what Jesus certainly intends us uh, to see about his mission in that time, uh, in that place, right? So the, the idea then is not that he's all these things of our own imagining. The idea is that he, he is the Messiah of Israel. He, he is, in fact, the King of the Jews. And we have to start focusing on that particular thing, lest our, uh, uh, not necessarily our imaginations, but our expectations kind of draw us this way or that way in, in thinking about Jesus. So what does it mean that he's the... He's the Messiah of, of Israel. He's, he's God's anointed king. Right? He, is at, he is at the head of Israel. He, he is um, attempting to re-enliven Israel. Yeah, Israel, Israel remember, is, is God's answer to uh, man's rebellion. So although we've got these beautiful accounts of, of creation this week, we know what's coming next. Yeah, if you don't know what's coming next, you have to go talk to the kindergarten <laughs> students because I, can't, I can hardly get through the creation account with them in my little storybook before they start talking about, oh, Adam and Eve, they eat the fruit. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I know the story as well. You know, like, I'm, I'm with you. It's coming. Just had to wait just a little bit, you know. So, so yeah, so we know, what's, we know what's coming next, right? We're rebellion against God, the kind of, you know, unwillingness to live under heaven's rule. We're going to do it ourselves. We're going to go our own way. Um, and of course, it doesn't work out very well. God and God has a plan all along, and that plan is uh, starts to take effect in Israel. Israel that He makes to be His light to the nations, and yet by the time Jesus is on the scene, it's just not. It's just not there. It's just not happening. And this is part of Jesus is living His uh, His life as Israel. He's living His life as Israel in the flesh, and that means that He's issuing both right uh, challenge to the kind of prevailing narratives of his day, to the to kind of prevailing agendas of his day. This is challenge, opposition, whatever. Uh, but it's also consolation and fulfillment and, and, and the like for, uh, for those who 
uh, at least perhaps uh, intuited the, the plan and purpose of God in, in, uh, in, in calling Israel to be his own, in, in choosing a, uh, a people for, for himself to, to embody and live out his purposes. So this is, this is precisely what's going on here. Jesus has gone off into, um, he's, he's gone off, you know, some, somewhere north of Galilee into Gentile territory, and he's, he's not in that space of, you know, enlivening the, the Jewish people. He's not, in, he's not in that space of, okay, like, this is, this is Israel, and I'm doing this uh, renewed Israel movement, I'm moving off in, into the other lands. And, and, and you know, we can imagine, he, we've been seeing his desire to, to get away for a little bit, you know, like to, to spend some time outside of the, the pressures of the whole thing and whatever. And in, as, he, as he moves off, he's confronted seemingly almost immediately by this Greek, a Syrophoenician, by a Gentile. And uh, this, is, this is massively problematic. Yeah, because, he, because he's doing the renewal of Israel thing, and even think back to, the, the, we've, just, we've just been through purity laws, the cleansing of cups and hands and whatever, and, uh, and then also the, the sense that, um, you know, he, he's building a, a renewed Israel agenda, and it flies in the face of the, the agendas of his day, which, which depend on the purity laws in order to keep the, the, to keep the project on track according to the other agenda. And Jesus is dismissing some of that stuff because he's saying, actually, the real agenda is here. It looks a bit different, and we're going to go about it differently. But, but you can trust me because I'm doing the renewed Israel thing. Now, if I go off in, if he goes off into Gentile territory and starts doing the things there that he was doing in Israel, then he's not doing a renewed Israel thing. And he knows that. And he doesn't want to give the impression that he's doing anything other than the renewed Israel thing, because that is what he's doing. And it comes up time and time, and time again in the gospel. Yeah, he, he's doing, he is Israel's Messiah. He's there to lead that people. He's not there to heal the world. It's just not, it's not the way it is. Why is that, though? It's because a renewed Israel will heal the world. He's not, the, he's not like one person running around healing everybody, blah, 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 whatever. Right? Because then, what is he, then he becomes a, you know, a, a one-man medical missionary. Right? He, beca he becomes a strong prophet and whatever, and he's doing everything for everyone. Right? It's like this is, this is not the way to renewed humanity. But before, before we get even to that stage, he's still doing the renewed Israel thing. But he goes off, and here it is, the Syrophoenician woman. And what, what does she care about the Renewed Israel Project? You know, it's like her daughter is suffering. So what does she care? She doesn't care about what Jesus' agenda is. And, there's, and there's, there's very good things going on there, right, as she, as she goes to him. You know, what, again, the, the power of, of her faith in, uh, in going to Jesus. She, she knows who he is. She knows what he has the power to do. She's, go, she's going to go to him. But he's, but he's going to resist because he's doing the renewed Israel thing. So it's not time. It's not time for, to go out there. Yeah, but she, her insistence is what enables that to happen. It's a bit of a one-off, right? It's a bit of a one-off. He's not, he's not going to camp out there now and start doing the things that he was doing in Israel because he can't. It's not, it's not the mission. He's about the renewal of Israel. So, he, so we, have this, we have this little exchange. There's a lot of playful ban banter here. It's one of the things like, you know, some of we, we come to the gospel with our own sense of reverence. That's good. You know, our own sense of, I don't know, probably stoicism and taking ourselves too seriously. And we think that, of course, everyone in the gospel is always taking themselves seriously. It's just, it's not the way, it, it's really not the way it is. Uh, but this kind of playful banter and, and her, her persistence with him that, that allows <clears throat> what was what ha what is anticipated <clears throat> to come into the present, and I think this is also very significant for our prayer, because we we are people of yes the the already and the not yet. This and this this is language of inaugurated eschatology. Just for that, <laughs> yeah. Why do you care? I don't know, but uh, whatever. Is this is this is the language of like, what what has happened in Jesus is what we anticipate happening at the end of the age. Right, so in Jesus is launched the kingdom of God. It's not yet fully implemented. But we have a sense of what the full implementation of the kingdom of God looks like. The, the, uh, the kingdom of, of love, the kingdom of peace, the kingdom of justice. The king, right? We should have some, some sense of the way that God wants the human community not only to live together, quote unquote, because that sounds like a kind of passive peace, but the way that, the, the way that God wants the human community to flourish together. 
right? To, to be a place of, to, to be, you know, a world of, of, properly speaking, human flourishing and the flourishing of his entire creation. We have some sense of, of what that should look like. And if, if you don't have a sense of it, ask God to help you dream about the way he wants his world to be, right? And if we can dream about it, but then we also have to understand we, we have some of the strength that we need to do something about it, to bring, to bring about that state of affairs. And this is, again, the already and the not yet, right? Is that we are, we are living as people of that age, the age to come. We're living today as people of the age to come. But we only, we only do it by participation in the life of grace that God has called us to. So we, we do it by prayer, right? We give, our, we give ourselves, our hearts, our lives over to God in prayer. And then we're able to live out our lives in his service, bringing about the state of affairs that is to come. Yeah, it's, it's not yet here. But we still, we, we are called to live at the intersection of, of heaven and earth. Yeah, so we're, I mean, look, this is a shift from, from even, even this story because the, the door to the Gentiles opens in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Yeah, but the death and resurrection of Jesus also gives, uh, allows us to enter the way and the life of the age to come. But we have to work to advance God's agenda here and now. We live at the intersection of heaven and earth, but we, li but we live in that space by faith. We have to keep entrusting ourselves to Jesus, and we have to keep following his lead. He is, he is the one who is bringing about that end state of affairs, and he's, and he's called us to himself to be people who advance that here and now, who work to implement the kingdom of God here and now in anticipation of what that one day will be. The same, the same insistence of this, of this woman, right, the, the per her perseverance in prayer, and yeah, her faith, it's all very instructive to us. Now, we could, take her, we could take her example seriously. We should push out boldly in prayer, knowing what God wants to achieve, and, and asking Him to give us the strength we know we need in order to advance His rule, both, both in our hearts, in our lives, and in the world.